For any nation controlling the skies is not just a military advantage, it is a fundamental pillar of national security. This concept known as air superiority means having the power to fly where you want, when you want, while preventing your adversary from doing the same. It ensures that ground troops are safe from aerial attack, that supply lines remain open, and that critical intelligence can be gathered without interference. Achieving this dominance requires the most advanced tools available and for over a decade, one aircraft was seen as the undisputed key to unlocking this power, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. It was more than just a plane, it was a statement of technological supremacy. The F-35 was designed from the ground up to be a game changer. Its most celebrated feature is its very low observable technology, more commonly known as stealth. This allows the F-35 to operate deep within enemy territory, virtually invisible to even the most advanced radar systems. It was built to see, but not be seen, giving its pilot an unprecedented advantage in any engagement. For a long time nations lined up to purchase the F-35 because owning it meant joining an exclusive club. It was a symbol that your Air Force was operating at the absolute cutting edge, capable of defeating any potential threat before it even knew what was happening. This jet was also promoted as a flying supercomputer. The F-35's real power came from its incredible sensor fusion capabilities. It could gather massive amounts of data from its own powerful radar, infrared sensors, and electronic warfare systems, and then combine it with information from friendly aircraft, ships, and ground stations. This created a complete, easy-to-understand picture of the entire battlefield for the pilot. This level of situational awareness was revolutionary. It meant an F-35 pilot could make faster, smarter decisions than any opponent, essentially becoming the quarterback of the sky and coordinating the entire fight from the cockpit. Because of these incredible, almost science fiction-like abilities, the F-35 was seen as the only logical choice for any serious air force. The narrative was simple. If you wanted to guarantee air superiority for the next generation, you needed the F-35. There was no real alternative that could offer its unique combination of stealth, sensor fusion, and networking power. This perception made it the default champion in the global fighter jet market. Allied nations saw its acquisition, not just as a military upgrade, but as a strategic necessity to maintain pace with the United States and other major world powers, solidifying its status as the king of the skies. The story of the F-35, however, is not just one of technological triumph. It is also a story of staggering expense. The program has become the most expensive weapon system in human history, with a lifetime cost projected to exceed $1.7 trillion. While the initial unit price of the jet has fluctuated, the real financial burden comes from its operational and maintenance costs. The F-35 is incredibly complex, requiring specialized ground crews, expensive spare parts, and constant software updates. For many countries, the long-term cost of simply keeping a fleet of F-35S in the air became a daunting and perhaps unsustainable financial commitment. These rising costs began to expose a critical vulnerability in the F-35's global dominance. Budgets are finite, and defense ministries started asking tough questions. Was the absolute pinnacle of stealth technology worth it if it meant you could only afford to fly a small number of jets for a limited number of hours? A larger fleet of less expensive but still highly capable fighters might offer a better return on investment. This economic reality forced many nations to look for alternatives that could provide robust defense capabilities without breaking their national budgets, opening the door for other aircraft to be seriously considered. Beyond the staggering price tag, political factors also began to complicate the F-35's appeal. As a US-made aircraft, its sale comes with significant political strings attached. Buyers are locked into the American defense ecosystem, dependent on the U.S. for parts, upgrades, and operational support. Recent shifts in U.S. foreign policy have made some allies nervous about this dependency. Nations like Canada and Portugal, for example, started to reconsider their planned F-35 purchases, wary of tying their national security so tightly to the political whims of another country. The desire for greater strategic independence became a powerful motivator to explore other options. The invincibility of the F-35 was therefore being challenged not by a rival aircraft in a dogfight, but by the practical realities of economics and geopolitics. The myth that it was the only choice was beginning to crumble. 
The very things that made it so advanced, its complexity and its deep integration with U.S. systems, were now being viewed as potential liabilities. The world was changing and the definition of a superior fighter jet was expanding beyond just raw technological prowess to include affordability, sustainability, and sovereign control. This created the perfect opening for a new contender to step into the ring. Stepping into this new environment is the Saab JS-39 Gripen, a multi-role fighter jet from Sweden. The Gripen was designed with a completely different philosophy. Instead of aiming to be an invisible, all-powerful weapon, it was engineered to be a clever, adaptable, and highly efficient tool of war. Its primary strengths are not built around stealth, but around advanced electronic warfare, extreme cost-effectiveness, and remarkable ease of maintenance. The Gripen is the smart fighter, built for nations that need to get the most out of every dollar they spend on defense, offering a compelling alternative to the F-35's high-cost approach. One of the Gripen's most attractive features is its low operational cost. It is significantly cheaper to buy and fly than the F-35. Saab claims the Gripen has the lowest cost per flight hour of any modern fighter, this is achieved through smart design choices. For example, it is built to operate from small dispersed airbases and even straight sections of public roads, requiring minimal ground crew and equipment. A small team of conscripts can refuel and rearm a Gripen in a matter of minutes, getting it back into the fight with incredible speed. This resilience and low logistical footprint are huge advantages for countries without massive military infrastructures. Technologically, the Gripen EF, the latest version, is no slouch, while it is not a stealth aircraft, it is designed for survivability, it features a highly advanced active electronically scanned array radar, and a sophisticated electronic warfare suite designed to jam and deceive enemy radar systems. It embraces a concept of network-centric warfare, sharing vast amounts of data seamlessly with other Gripens and friendly assets. In some ways, it's a different approach to the same problem the F-35 solves with stealth. Instead of hiding, the Gripen aims to outsmart its opponents by blinding their sensors and overwhelming them with superior tactical information. Comparing the two jets reveals their different priorities. The F-35 is slower, with a top speed of Mach 1.6, but its strength is in its stealth and sensor fusion. The Gripen is faster, reaching Mach 2, and is more agile in a classic dogfight. The F-35's radar cross-section is tiny, making it hard to detect. The Gripen has a larger radar signature but compensates with powerful electronic countermeasures. The most significant difference is the price. A Gripen's unit cost is around $85 million, with much lower running costs, whereas an F-35 can cost well over $100 million per unit with the highest operational costs in the world. The practical implications of these differences are now reshaping the global fighter market. Countries like Canada and Portugal, initially on track to purchase the F-35, are now seriously evaluating the Gripen. For a nation like Canada, which has a vast territory to patrol, the Gripen's longer range and lower operating costs are highly appealing. It means they could afford a larger fleet, providing better coverage of their airspace for the same budget. For these countries, the question is shifting from who has the most advanced jet, to which jet is the right tool for our specific needs and budget. The Gripen provides a compelling answer. This competition is fundamentally healthy for the defense industry. For years, the F-35's dominance left little room for alternatives. Now nations have a real choice. They can weigh the F-35's fifth-generation stealth capabilities against the Gripen's cost efficiency, operational flexibility, and powerful electronic warfare systems. This forces manufacturers to be more competitive on price, performance, and support. It also encourages innovation, as companies like Saab push the boundaries of what a 4.5-generation fighter can do, proving that stealth is not the only path to air superiority in the 21st century. The rise of the Gripen as a serious contender signifies a broader shift in military procurement. The idea that one single solution fits all is fading. The specific threats, geography, and economic realities of a country are becoming the primary drivers of decision-making. A nation facing a high-end threat with advanced air defenses might still see the F-35 as essential. However, a country focused on homeland defense, air policing, and maintaining a cost-effective but credible deterrent may find the Gripen to be the smarter, more sustainable choice. It's a move towards a more tailored and pragmatic approach to national defense. 
Ultimately, the Gripen vs. F-35 showdown is changing the conversation about what makes a fighter jet the best. It is no longer a simple contest of speed, stealth, or firepower. The new calculus includes lifetime cost, ease of maintenance, political independence, and adaptability. The F-35 may remain the champion of high-end penetrating strike missions, but the Gripen has proven that there is more than one way to achieve air power. This rivalry ensures that for the foreseeable future, nations will have more options, leading to smarter, more diverse and more resilient air forces around the world.